celebration of Mardi Gras. But most of all, New Orleans is known as the home of Dixieland jazz. For over 50 years, this popular form of music has warmed the hearts of people the world over. But the Louisiana Superdome in the heart of downtown has also been recognized as the site of some of the most celebrated sports spectacles in history. And on December 3rd, champion Wilfred Benitez defended his crown for the third time. The contender was Thomas Hearns, who finally had his chance for redemption and a second title. HBO Sports presents World Championship Boxing. WBC Super Wallaway champion Wilfred Benitez defends his crown against the number one challenger, Thomas Hearns. Barry Tompkins with Sugar Ray Leonard. We are at the Superdome. Ray, you have beaten both these fighters. Let me give you the hypothetical. You're Wilfred Benitez. How do you fight Tommy Hearns? Well, to fight Tommy Hearns, to beat a Tommy Hearns, basically to be a thinking man the whole time. Work inside, make him frustrate him. Get inside, work his body. All right, you're Tommy Hearns. How do you fight Wilfred Benitez? Well, the left jab is, will be the most important uh, weapon Tommy Hearns must use. I mean, he has to be very consistent. Keep Benitez thinking. Don't fall into any trap against the ropes and what have you. But a left jab is very important for Tommy Hearns. All right, Ray Leonard has said, we'll wait till the first round to make a prediction. We'll talk about that in the first round. And in the red corner, we have another champion, the heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. He is with our own Larry Merchant. Larry? Thank you, Barry. Larry, we've seen two champions once again come together and fight a war. Neither one would give up until one just fell from exhaustion. Can this possibly happen with Benitez and Hearns, despite their styles? Yes, I do. I, I, it can happen, uh, Larry. Uh, Tommy Hearns got a past history of tiring later in the round. And you know Benitez don't tire, even though he don't fight. He's an educated boxer. He's a good boxer. I'm expecting a great fight. And as I said, I pick Hearns in nine. Okay, back to Barry Ray. Okay, thank you, Larry. And here is the challenger, Thomas Hearns, making his way toward the ring. But before we look ahead, let's look back. Hearns goes after the WBC Super Wallaway title. It is the second of four he hopes to conquer as he climbs the weight divisions in his quest to leave his mark on the record books. This is in many ways do or die for Thomas Hearns. His boxing future is on the line. Thomas Hearns trying to step up a weight class. That is not an easy thing to do. Still trying to forget the loss to the man on my left, Sugar Ray Leonard. But what a record. 35 wins, just a single loss. 32 coming by knockout. Thomas Hearns more than just a formidable challenger. But he's going to get all he wants tonight. And the man who is going to give it to him is this man, Wilfred Benitez. Before the first punch in the opening bell, let's look back with Wilfred Benitez, the champion. Wilfred Benitez, the super welterweight champion, has won three titles in three weight divisions. 
Wilfred Benitez won his first crown on March 6, 1976, at the age of 17. The junior welterweight champion at the time was Antonio Cervantes. And on that day, Benitez became the youngest title holder in boxing history. Almost three years later, Benitez went after a second title with popular WBC welterweight champion Carlos Palomino. In 86 degree heat in Puerto Rico, Benitez piled up points and won a split decision. It was that victory that set up his first million dollar payday with Sugar Ray Leonard. Benitez suffered a nasty cut from a butt in the sixth round. He did rally to win some of the middle rounds, but he was behind by two points on all three cards. In the 15th, Leonard ended it all with a technical knockout. Wilfred Benitez had suffered his first loss as a pro. But like a true professional, Benitez came back to win a third title. On January 30th, 1982, he faced Roberto Duran in his second defense of the super welterweight crown. The hands of stone now had feet of clay, and Benitez carved out a 15-round unanimous decision. In his nine-year pro career, he has become one of the most respected fighters in boxing history. And now he attempts to defend his super welterweight title for the third time. Wilfred Benitez has climbed to the top of his profession at a younger age than anyone before him. And now he must clear another hurdle in his race to become a legend in the fight game. Wilfred Benitez, the champion, now in the ring. He is a guy who seems to be getting better as he moves up in weight. He, too, with just the one loss. That also, yes, to Sugar Ray Leonard. He has a draw with Harold Weston. Those are long since forgotten. 26 knockouts. That is not so impressive, but he, remember, is a counterpuncher. And a tough one. And here's the game right here, Larry. Yeah, we're seeing uh, a junior middleweight face-off here. It's an in-your-face <laughs> well, I don't know who's going to win this one. This one is a draw. Yeah, the crowd loves this. I would laugh. You see, that's that's why I'm not there. You can see it had ended before they ever got to the center of the ring here. Well, we should mention here that Benita's pass is to use early rounds to size up his opponent. Round one, super welterweight championship. Tommy Hearns on the right in the white trunks. Wilfred Benitez, black trunks, white stripe on the left of your screen right now. Both men on their toes. The feeling out process has begun. Well, Tommy's going straight at Benitez. And again, the left jab Barry, of Tommy will be the most effective punch, especially in the early rounds because it was very difficult for me to land some solid blows to Benitez. But we're talking about a totally different story here. Tom is, is, is bigger than I am, and his, 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 arm, his reach is incredible. So that may be a factor here. And he does hurt. I think you said that, made that point abundantly clear. He can't, he can't afford to tighten up. And Benitez, you know, he, he's able to frustrate a fighter, but make, it, make mistakes, and capitalize on it. A lot of bobbing and weaving and fainting right now. Benitez slipping those punches, very characteristic. Burns misses the right hand. Benitez has what I consider a radar. I think what it's going to take for Tommy is, is the jabs and some feints. He has to feint him. Well, in fact, he came in with the word super radar on his robe. Well, that was, I saw it that Tommy wants you to buy with that right hand. That's good, too, because you can't move the body. Tommy's left jab must be consistent. He has to keep it out there, keep it busy, keep Benitez thinking. I talked to Benitez yesterday. He was saying that no more fooling around. He trains hard for every fight, trained hard for this fight. He knows it's business now. The major problem is fighting a guy like Tommy, as tall as Tommy is, is the fact of getting inside. What I did, and Benitez is pretty much doing the same thing I did. I moved the first few rounds and got to a point where it's that I got Tommy in close, and I was able to get in close, where it's that I was able to deliver some punches. But it's difficult, I tell you, Barry, it's really, I, I was in there. It's tough getting inside with Tommy. And he says, very patient, really no damage here in the first round inside a minute. 
Neither man has scored with a punch. Benitez has thrown very few. Talking about Benitez's ability to slip punches, I remember Floyd Patterson used to say that he watches the man's chest muscles to see where the punches are coming from. Allows him to almost anticipate before the punch comes. See that right hand there, thrown twice thrown by Tommy. Benitez is able to just get out of the way of it. Slip punch is very, very smooth. What Tommy can't fall into, he can't fall into waiting too long. I want to make a couple of points about that round. Benitez did not land a single punch. I think that was a very good round for Tommy Hearns because he went to the body. You can't headhunt with Benitez. He's just too quick. Let's go to Benitez's corner. Basically, don't change nothing that you're doing. Keep looking just the way. All right, we're now in Tommy Hearns' corner. And Emmanuel Stewart's last words were, keep up the way you're going. Yeah, as I was about to say, Larry, Tommy's doing the right thing. He wants you to body, but the head is very difficult to hit. And the other point that Larry Merchant made that Wilfred Benitez did not land a punch in that round. And that is the only way you're going to win fights, is to score with punches, needless to say. But first, Benitez has to find a way, a method of getting close to Tommy without being hit by Tommy. Rarely changes expression in a ring. Fight has been fought at long range. That was a left hand by Benitez. Benitez content to stay in the corner. You can see him just with that pattern of moving the head very quickly, and he rarely gets hurt. What Benitez is really watching, he's not watching the left jab, he's watching the right hand. He's watching the power. He can take a few left jabs, but he doesn't want to get hit by Tommy's power hand, the right hand. You know, see, let Tommy parry out a couple of times. That was a good was, right hand by Aaron. He was just a big punch. That. He was just a big punch. It was an overhand right. And Hearns catches him again, actually caught him twice, but did not that time. The other one went by his back. Benitez is catching his right hands now on the arm. I feel what Benitez is trying to do, Burris, he's trying to really uh, make Tommy frustrated, make Tommy mad, make Tommy load up with his punches. He can't load up. The left jab leads up to your punches, your combinations. So you have to take your time. He it takes a lot to get mad. It takes a lot of patience to fight a guy like Tommy Hearns, I would think. It takes a, a great deal. In fact, Benitez now with an, uh, an overhand right. It wasn't really that hard, but again, Benitez is trying to find out the best method, the most effective method to get to Tommy Hearns. Benitez, should be pointed out, has been knocked down on numerous occasions. But again, that was back in the days when he really didn't take this whole thing very seriously and felt he could just walk into the ring and whip anybody. He got away with one with Bruce Curry after being knocked down three times. Harold Weston knocked him down. There's a good right hand by Hearns, but he can't double up on it. Almost every one of those missed except the first one. That was a good right hand. He got Benitez bouncing off the ropes and caught him, but not a lot of those are scoring. Not a lot scored as I saw it. Well, they were three or four, and that's a lot when you consider that Benitez hardly landed anything worthwhile in that round again. 
and we may see a fighter being intimidated. We're going to take a look at that exchange again as Hearns tries to measure Benitez. Benitez normally likes to fight on the ropes and punch off the ropes, but in this case, he's just being kept too busy, and if, if half the punches are landing, that's all that's necessary. because Hearns is fighting practically a perfect fight right now. Third round, Super That's Waterweight Championship, Wilfred Benitez, Tommy Hearns. You know, Benitez is such a proud champion. He really gets upset. He considered an insult when it, the, uh, the opponent gets the best of him. He picks the pace up. If he gets caught with a good shot, he gets strong and more aggressive. So you might see a change in Benitez this round. has done the only damage in the fight and in that exchange that you saw in the replay really only two punches plus one that was a little bit low landed one was a good one one thing that is unusual about a guy of Tommy Hearns size in fact this man can throw so many punches you know it's unbelievable normally a guy that tall his hand speed you know it's, it's always uh, not that quick but Tommy can throw so many punches punches so fast Tommy is doing a lot of the painting that you expect Wilfred Benitez to do. There's almost a mirror image here. You know, Benitez, his stance, it seems as though he wants to throw a right hand. When I fought Benitez, the same wide stance, it looks as though he's attempting to throw a right hand. So I was always prepared for that. Benitez can't switch hands. He will do it from time to time, but he considers himself a natural right-hander. Counterpunch by Hearns. See, this is the difference here. Benitez is a great counterpuncher, but for a guy with Tommy's height and reach advantage, it's a different story altogether because he, he's able to land Benitez, land, and he pulls back. Tommy's arms are so long, he can hit you on the way out, a way back. Getting inside for just a moment, peppering Benitez with a jab. Now that's a good punch, guy. The punch that uh, Benitez tried to, uh, attempted to land, that upward jab. He goes down like a little crouch and comes up with that left jab. Not straight, but in the angle, upward. Benitez lunging at him, caught him, I think, with the arm more than with the hand that time. Benitez, a combination. End of the round. As Ray indicated, by the stance of Benitez in that round, and it seemed to me, even from the first round, that Benitez was looking to throw a big right hand over the jab of Hearns, but as you say, Hearns has been in and out of there so quick with his long reach that he hasn't been able to reach her. Everything's still behind the jab. The fight progress is a man's reflection slow down. A lot of the shots is barely missing will start connecting. The main thing, you have control of the fight. And that's a very important factor right now because the fight is very close. It's just the idea of who's controlling who. Okay? And saving everything for when your man makes his big move. So you have it right there to make your move back with him, okay? Okay. You have an issue and everything is perfect. I thought that Emmanuel Stewart uh, uh, make an excellent <laughs> commentator as, as well as a traitor in that case. Same might be said for you, pal. <laughs> That was echoing across Larry's thoughts between the last round. Fourth round. Hearns 
just trying to stay loose. He did that against you too, right? Well, I think Benitez now is trying to uh, get in some body shots. I'm quite sure he's going to try to throw some. But Tommy, he's able, he surprised me again. He, he can box. The guy really can box. Lateral movement, and he utilized the ring very well. And see, the problem that Benitez is having, in fact, is getting close enough to him because it's really hard to hit Tommy. Of course, a big money fight somewhere down the road, very likely for the winner of this fight. Marvin Hagler awaits somebody. Both men would like to have him. That was Benitez. No damage. Well, I think both of these young, both these young men are looking for bigger paydays, even with marvelous Marvin Hagler. In fact, the winning, having an impressive showing here, especially by a knockout. I mean, without question, Hagler will probably be next. And um, each guy's trying to find a, a big punch to land on each other. I think Tommy, the straight right hand, and Benitez, probably a looping right hand, the one I threw on. We look for a tactical fight. It is a tactical fight. A little scraping under the left eye, it looks like, of Wilfred Benitez. Those are the type of left jabs thrown by Tommy is what I was talking about. He has to be very consistent with that left jab. Keep him busy. Keep Benitez thinking. He has, he has to use that left jab more often. Hearn's getting the better of it early on here. There's a little marking under the left eye of Benitez. It is nothing to worry about at this juncture. I have a feeling, Barry, that uh, Tommy is going to eventually measure up to Benitez and catch him with a good punch. Well, so far, Hearns is getting off quicker and getting out quicker. What's going to be the turning point in this fight is the fact that when Tommy is able to land a flesh, clean right hand, and Benitez is still there, Benitez won't respect Tommy as much. I think there's still a lot of respect that Benitez holds for Tommy Harris for punching power. Benitez is such a master boxer in making his opponent miss, Larry. He haven't really loosened up. He started to loosen up in that round, but he got to loosen up a little bit more. Uh, One thing I've noticed, Larry, it seemed to me that while everyone was expecting Benitez to frustrate Hearns by making him miss, and it appears to me that Benitez is now getting a little frustrated and being more offensive than he likes to be. Yes, but Benitez is starting to come forward, and Tommy is starting to back up a little bit, and that's, starting, that's going to make a difference in this fight. This is the fifth round. Hearns on the right, Benitez on the left. Octavio yeah. Moran taking one point away from Tommy Hearns for holding and hitting. Well, that deduction of that one point, I think you're going to see a couple more points deducted because, see, it's not because it's Tommy Hearns' fault. It's just the way that Benitez fights. He gets inside, he faints you and everything. He comes in with his head down, and Tommy, being as tall as he is, probably naturally is going to put his, his arm on his guy's, on his man's head to uh, stop any headbutts. Hearns going to the body early on here in this round. Benitez is moving, I mean, he's using the ring, and he won't let Tommy set. Up on his toes more than I've seen Wilfred Benitez. Again, um, I think it's going to take one big punch thrown by Tommy, and uh, for Benitez to say, well, okay, I can take this guy's best shot, because that's what I was thinking about. I knew Tommy could punch, and I messed around to see how well, how hard he could punch, and he hit with a good shot, and I, from then on, I said, this guy can't really hurt me that much. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart between the third and fourth round saying 
Everything off the jab, everything off the jab. And Hearns has been pretty effective with the jab so far. Got a left hand right there behind the left jab. Benitez getting inside for just a moment on Hearns. What's happened? Benitez is starting to mesmerize Tommy. You know the way he's doing all those feints. And Tommy's waiting. This is a mistake. You can't wait for a guy like Benitez. He makes you, he makes you fall asleep. Hearns got the better of that exchange as Benitez tried to get inside and Hearns, Hearns tagged him on the head a couple of times with the left hand. Benitez gives you all those body feints with the hands, with the head, and then all of a sudden he comes across with his right hand, left hook, anything. Any particular punch he's able to throw. Like he attempted to throw that right hand there, which missed Tommy. Now, a right hand, there's the right hand, and that knocks Benitez back. They're going to call it a knockdown. Benitez doesn't like it. No question, Benitez was hurt. It came off the right hand by her. Now, that right hand there, I was waiting for it. You see, now we'll see a reaction of Benitez, whether or not he feels Tommy can hurt him or what. Now, that was a combination of the fact that he was hurt and he slipped a little bit. His legs are still not very solid. It was a good clean right hand by Tommy. Benitez seems to have his legs back under him now. And Hearns will pace himself. End of round five. Okay, we're going to take a look at that knockdown here immediately. There's a right hand right smack on the jaw. And it was more punch than slip. And let's take a look at it from another angle. A quick right hand. That seemed to graze him, but was a pretty good punch nonetheless. I think what we saw there, remember we heard Emmanuel Stewart say early he's going to make his move. And from what I've said before, Benitez is starting to be more offensive because he's frustrated. And so suddenly, because of that, Benitez was in the range of Hearns. Benitez knows he must make a positive move to get to Hearns, and he's in Hearns' range now, where earlier he was not. This is the sixth round. Tommy Hearns has been in control of this fight. Benitez pacing up early here in the sixth round. Takes two shots from Hearns. Benitez is somewhat reluctant to come inside on Tommy because Tommy, he's able to get off so many punches, whether it's left hook or right hand. I think Benitez feels safer against the ropes because, I mean, that's his fight. Well, he fought much of his fight with Roberto Duran with his back to the ropes very effectively. Here, Hearns is being very patient. Good shot by Hearns once more, and the legs once more on Benitez. Buckle under him a bit. Well, this is what Benitez has to do. He has to fight Tommy. I mean, he can't, he can't just stand back, because Tommy on for so long. So Benitez has to fight, street fighter. getting Hearns against the ropes here, but not doing a lot of damage, leaning on him right now. And Octavio Meron. You notice that Tommy clinch, and then people criticize Tommy for not clinching me. You learn every fight. That was a good shot. Good uppercut by Hearns. Benitez trying to weather this one, taking a few shots, takes the right hand and another left. Takes another straight left and holds on. Benitez is in those days, although he still has his senses together. I see Tommy can't punch himself out. Should take his time and not fall into Benitez's trap. Benitez wants Tommy to keep punching, punch himself out. But now Benitez appears to me very little tired himself. 
and he has not gone nowhere near the punches Tommy has thrown. This is the sixth round. Hearns has dictated the fight right from the opening bell. Again, the right hand that is set up, seems to be setting up, and he threw it. Let me just, he just threw the right hand that I felt he was trying to set Tommy up for. The lead off right. Now, this is when Benitez should become very aggressive because Tommy threw a lot of punches earlier in that round. This round, rather. That was a right hand by Hearns and a right hand by Benitez off the right hand by Hearns. And there's a the right hand that buckles Benitez. And Benitez is against the ropes and in trouble. Hearns after him at the bell. Smashing right hand. Benitez just doubled back to his corner. He's really hurt. There we see Benitez in a, in a zone that we, he hasn't been in much before. Now we're back, back with Tommy Hearns. And the important thing, the crucial thing in this fight is that the offensive fighter is making the defensive fighter fight in a way he doesn't like to. Here we come. There it is, the punch that buckled Benitez earlier in the round before that final crunching right hand on the ropes. Let's take another look at it from another angle. You can see the leverage Tommy got from that right hand. Ray, he seems to have been able to measure Benitez and catch Benitez with more big punches than we usually see Benitez catching. And because, because of Tommy's reach and Tommy's speed, I think that's the factor there. The other thing, Ray, is he just seems to really be right on balance with his punches. I mean, everything, Tommy has learned a great deal and uh, express is always a factor. And here, <laughs> Benitez is trying to use his experience, but maybe time is just too big, too fast, and uh, just too much for Benitez. But the fight is still not over. You can, never can tell what's gonna happen. Well, Benitez has been in that place before. He staggered back to his corner against Harold Weston after being knocked down and came back and won the fight. Uh, can Tommy carry that much weight? Is he uh, stronger at 154 pounds? And I feel he is. I think he can carry 160 pounds. He has, his, his body can carry that kind of weight and be comfortable with. Burns being very patient here. This is the seventh round. Two minutes remaining. Cutting the ring off against Benitez. Fighting a very smart fight. Now Tommy's moving so much that Benitez can't set up. If I was Benitez, you know, at this point now, he has to become more aggressive now. It's difficult to win a fight against Tommy Hearns moving backwards. He has to get inside, work Tommy's body, see how Tommy likes it there. But from the outside, Tommy's just too quick and uh, too powerful Benitez. There's a right hand by Benitez. Hearns kind of grins back at him. You know, Tommy has a tendency to smile when he's hurt. And he smiled at me. I know he's in trouble. <laughs> he may be in trouble now, but I doubt it very seriously. Only Tommy knows for sure. Doubling up with the left hand is Hearn. Inside the 30 right hand. Mark. That right hand was a good right hand, though. And another right hand by Benitez. You're starting to see a different Benitez now. Doubling up with the left hand again, but that was one of Benitez instead of round. I thought it was his best round, but I called it an even round. He's trying to solve 
His taller opponent. Let's hear listen to Emmanuel Stewart. You got to start tightening up the gap. You get too much time waiting on him now. You got to pick him. You're letting him get himself together. Okay. Keep your left hand up where you can start shielding the right hand. That's the only thing you got to look out for. So far, his left hook and his jab is not working. And keep him plenty of pressure on him. He eased up on him too much, you know. You got to ease up. You got to get in his confidence. Get his rhythm up. And start tracking him right hand to the body. Whether they land down here don't matter. Just keep hitting him down here, hitting him down here. Then it'll come right across the shoulder, okay? Start shooting him down into his body. So you just got so many opportunities. This fight could be over with this round if you come out and open up on it. And there's Wilfred Benitez. You wonder when he's going to abandon his basically defensive attitude and decide that it isn't working and that he must become offensive if he wants to retain his title. And Emmanuel Stewart saying keep the pressure on. You let him off a little bit too much in that last round. He started to get his confidence. And he also said, as you heard, that his jab has been ineffectual so far because he has not been using that much. And the fact that, like I stated earlier, if Tommy can't hit the head, he needs to go to the body. Carry down there a couple of times. Benitez has to be more expensive. He has to go to work now. Burns getting that jab into the face of Wilfred Benitez. Benitez tried to make his fight his, his opponent fall asleep. This Good is right hand again. Tommy. He's trying to do this with Tommy Bell. He's, he's, he gets inside, he faints and everything, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself falling asleep. Well, I really am impressed with what looks to me to be Hearn's maturity here. I thought he fought a very mature fight against you, too, but he just seems to have grown up as a fighter. Well, Tommy's going to get better and better. I mean, he, he's at that stage now. He, he's going to grow with uh, his uh, career. This is what Benitez has to do. Get inside with Tommy. Make him exchange punches. Left hand counter punch, but he took one to give one. You know, both fighters are making each other think because they started to land now with some pretty good punches. Benitez, Tommy will never see it. Because so far, Benitez has been down. He gets inside, and he works the body, then he comes to the head. But if he start off, start off with a looping right hand, I don't think Tommy will be able to see that. That was an effective punch for you in that fight, too, of course. Very effective. You see, Tommy's being affected now by the left jab. There's a right hand of the ribs and a left hand, which is a little bit short. scores, but once again, it scores not really flush because it's getting hers while he's on his bicycle. So he's taking away the force of the punch. Let's take a look at Wilfred Benitez. Larry Holmes, what does Benitez have to do to pull this fight out? I think he's doing the right thing now. He's starting to counter Tommy's left jab, and Tommy's starting to fatigue a little bit. His corner's not putting the ice pack on his neck. Uh, they're putting it on the neck, but they're not really putting water on him to cool him off. There's a, there was almost the best combination of Wilfred Benitez uh, fight, a right to the body, a left that, that missed. Tommy still got to come on and use that jab. He got to get a little bit more energy. There's always, there's been a question about the stamina of Hearns. And do you think that that's the thing that can hold him back now from winning? Yes, it is. It's the thing that will hold him back if he don't get it together. We come to the ninth round. Hey, both of you large eggs. 
Tommy has stamina. Believe me, <laughs> a great deal. A little bit too much. <laughs> Combination there by Benitez. I like those punches thrown by Benitez because now he's starting to work his body. He's going to the body a lot more with some pretty good shots. Benitez seemingly measuring her is a little bit better than before. Quick a left hand. He doesn't warm against the ropes. It's a lunging right hand by Benitez. Benitez has gone to that right hand lead a couple of times in the last two rounds. You know, in training, Tommy, uh, I thought he was working on keeping his hands up, the left hand up higher. But you know, as the rounds go by, each round, it goes lower and lower. And I wouldn't be surprised if he went back down to his leg like he normally keeps it. Didn't you say that you get more power from your left hand being in that position? I get a lot of more power. I get more leverage because as I bring it up, it's like a snap. It's more snap. It almost seemed obvious that Benitez is going to throw a leadoff fight again. Biden's stance and the way he seems like he's waiting. He's waiting for an opportunity, but Tommy won't give him that opportunity. That is something you can't do against Tommy. You can't reach, you can't telegraph your punches. Inside the one minute mark, round nine. The best thing Benitez can do when he, and he, he, he do it in spurts, is faint. Faint, get inside, and then work. Because you know, every time Benitez give Tommy a head or a head or arm faint, Tommy throw a punch, he attempt, you see him shake. that Benitez can't make it go straight into Tommy. Benitez took one and gave one again, and hers is not back with a left hand. They say it was a punch, not a knockdown. Hers is saying, no, I think it was a punch. It was a left hand from Benitez. It might have been set up by a counter-punching right. End of round nine. I'm curious to see this myself. It appeared to me, uh, Barry and Ray, that that was a part punch and part off balance push. But nevertheless, it's been scored a knockdown. And that could have a very positive effect on Benitez. Yeah, it didn't look like a really good punch at all. It, it sort of, it hit Hearns high on the head and just sort of tilted him over. <laughs> Let's go to Hearn's corner now. This is the tenth round. Two similar knockdowns, one by each man. Kind of half punch, half push. Hearns was not hurt by that, no more than Benitez was when he got knocked out. You know, Benitez gets hit by the left hook of Tommy. Every time he comes in, and then he raises, he puts his hands up later on. There was a good right hand by Benitez, and Hearns did not flinch. He gets out of there. Solid right hand. Benitez continuing to counter punch. Right hand lead by Benitez.
the knee didn't seem to be hurt. Swelling alongside the left eye of Wilfred Benita. We broke the last big shot because I think Tommy Punch is a little cleaner, a little more devastating. exchange is perhaps uh, the busiest exchange I've ever seen Wilfred Benitez in, which speaks both to the condition of the fight and the fact that he is a champion who's trying to come back. Let's see what happened in that exchange. There was a good left hand behind, but Hearns came back with a strong right hand right on the button to retake the initiative, but here comes Benitez right straight back looking for some place to land. Good body shot by Benitez that slipped in there between the long arms of Tommy Hearns. The situation is getting desperate for Benitez and Benitez is trying to come up to that situation and give the right answer. This is the 11th round. Pick up the pace here. He doesn't find room enough to throw some big shots. And you will see, he'll work, Benitez will work his way in, he gets there, and uh, all of a sudden he says, well, this wall is bigger than I thought it was. There was a butt. Neither man is damaged, but you saw Tommy Hearns call the attention of Octavia Moran. Tommy Hearns has looked very impressive. I mean, he's fighting a he's fighting a real a true champion here in Benitez. He's fighting a very smart fight too. You know, it's funny, Barry. You know, I, I'm sitting on the outside, and uh, it's like the rounds are going by so fast. But in that ring, the round seems to really take hours before the pass, especially on the losing end. 
much easier for Larry Merchant and I out here, I'll tell you. We, we are undefeated out here, and we can fight every couple of weeks. Well, I prefer to dress this way. Tommy Hearns letting up at all and giving Benitez any chance to seize the initiative. Well, Tommy's doing what he has to do to win. He got that jab working, he got that quick right hand, and he also counters. Benitez don't know what to do. He's kind of confused. You see? Let's listen to Emmanuel Stewart and Tommy Hearns. You got a grand on him, man. That's what you're doing. Oh. The round is coming up. Keep your hands up now. Be sure you, you keep them up. Well, I'll tell them if your attacks get close together. You're shooting them if you get too much time in between. Let's try to knock them back. play there where Emmanuel Stewart is now saying to Tommy Hearns, it's okay if he wants to be back on the ropes. We don't have to be afraid of him there anymore. Thus indicating that he feels Tommy Hearns has things in hand. This is the 12th. Tommy just winked at me just before the round started, I guess just to reassure me that everything is in a com com complete control. Well, it looks that way right now. One thing that does impress me is that the corner of Tommy Hearns is very calm, and I've always, it's always been my experience that the corner that is more collected, more calm, is the most effective. Well, that, that is must. I mean, Tommy Hearns' phone is very professional. I mean, he, to it. he knows the business. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Blood from the nose of Wilfred Benitez now. And also a little bit of a cut, I believe, on the bridge of the nose. That's a long side, the left eye, and that could cause Benitez some problems. Benitez's corner and his father, Goyo, Gregorio, urging him onward. But Benitez can't seem to double up against the very effective Tommy Hearns tonight. See, Tommy Harris can let that right hand go at any given moment. And that's what Benitez has to be very careful of. When, he, when he's coming in, although he's, he's doing the right thing by fainting, he's still vulnerable for that straight right hand because he's coming straight at Tommy. Well, I really didn't think I would see anybody be able to dictate the tempo of the fight against somebody like Wilfred Benitez, and yet I think Tommy Hearns has done that so far, Ray. Well, again, you know um, Tommy Hearns, he, he extends that left hand. You gotta knock it down. Knock it out of the way. It's not supposed to be there anyway, so knock it down. Benitez is kicking the pace up, but he's walking in. Took a good shot. That was a good left hand from Hearns. is starting to show the beating it has taken from both the left and right hand of Tommy Hearns. I know you can relate to that. Yes, in fact, they've always criticized Tommy for not having stamina. Once he fought me, that proved he has stamina. But recently, Tommy has not been going to distance. And still, here is the 12th round. He looks very fresh. And keeping Benitez at the end of that left jab. Inside of 10 seconds, round 12. He can do this for 40 rounds. Uh, it looks very strong. He's been on his toes at the right time, worked the ring very well, fighting a very smart fight. Let's take a look at the champion, Wilfred Benitez, a man who's crowned right now appears to be toppling. You can almost see it falling down around his eyes at this moment. One of the reasons that Benitez isn't effective, Ray, as he goes after Hearns, is that 
he's, he's practically never had to do it during his career. He's not comfortable throwing more than a, a one punch or a punch and a half as he moves forward, and then his initiative seems to peter out. And also, Larry, the fact that Benitez always had trouble with boxer. With me, when I was able to move and utilize the ring, it frustrated him in a sense. and Tommy Hearns will have come all the way back from that defeat by Ray Leonard. This is the 13th, and Wilfred Benitez is simply running out of time and running after Tommy Hearns. Again, Benitez is running in with that head. Very dangerous against a man like Tommy Hearns because of that right hand Tommy has. Each man has been knocked down once, each a questionable knockdown. Benitez, he's close to that left jab out to get close to Tommy. And quite naturally, the jab is to get you closer, but you can't float it out there. You have to stick it out with authority. Once again, Benitez gets the one punch in but cannot double up. Benitez now he just can't get close enough because Tommy is. He moves back when uh, Benitez takes, tries to get in, and he just can't get in position to do any serious damage to uh, Tommy Hearns. It's very frustrating for a fighter, especially for Benitez at this point here. I guess he feels he's behind, you know, especially uh, by points, and uh, he wants to pour it on. Because this time won't give him the opportunity. Trying to press Hearns, and he just can't get close enough. It's like pouring water on a fire that just won't go out. <laughs> Let's take a look at both fighters here and wonder what's going on inside this really outstanding champion's head. Okay. Once again, we come late into a fight. Frequently, a, a real champion will pull out everything to try to win and leave himself exposed and perhaps get stuck. We're at that 14th round where something frequently happens. Be alert out there. Tommy Hearns, it would appear for all intent, would need only to stay on his two feet to win the Super Welterweight Championship. He aspires to four championships. Well, I talked about strategy earlier, Barry, and uh, Tommy has found the right you know, tactics of approaching his fight. Box 
position, using that jab, consistently keeping his man off balance. And when he get inside, put his punches together. It's an accommodation, 15 seconds remaining. Benitez's corner urging him on here, thinking that perhaps Hearns is hurt. I don't believe he is. We will have three minutes of fighting left. Ray, what I'm struck by here is this. In a fight between a powerful, positive force in the ring like Tommy Hearns and a powerful, what I've called negative force, like Benitez, the positive force usually comes out on top. That's true, but what we have here is two magnets turned the opposite way. And uh, Mitami seems to be more positive now and more uh, assured what he's going to do and what he's about to uh, complete in this next round. Another fan break. Well, Tommy Hearns, true enough, has never fought 15 rounds. He has fought almost 14. You can ride up. Larry, just for the record, how do you have it at this point? I assume Benitez would have to knock him out. I think he needs a double knockout for one. <laughs> I couldn't hear correctly in Tommy's point. I don't know whether, whether or not they told him, don't showboat or showboat. Has to get him down for a count of 20. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, it'll be close. Well, Benitez just made a good right hand against Tommy. So Benitez's work is cut out. He knows he's got to go get it. And he's got about two and a half minutes to do that. Did get a right hand in. He took a left hand, a straight left jab by Hearns. Benitez tried to press him. That right hand we saw Benitez uh, that he threw against uh, Maurice Hope to gain that title. I haven't seen the same attempt to throw it yet. That was one of those one in a million punches. It's such a surprising punch too, bro. I mean, because you really can't see it coming. It's a looping right hand. There's a the right hand, but Hearns does not take a backward step. Benitez doesn't seem to have a snap on his punch. He throws his right hand and he puts his other hand along with it. Minute and a half 
remaining in this fight. Keeps the jab in the face and keeps Benitez off of it. Well, the way things look to me, boy, Tommy has been in complete control and uh, he can just put another belt around his waist. But a very intelligent fight did Tommy Hearns. And barring some bizarre scoring, which we have seen before, you might see Tommy Hearns shuffle because when he feels good, he does a shuffle. Crowd is on its feet here, exhorting what they expect will be the new champion. Benitez down to 30 seconds. A great of a technician Benitez is, he just couldn't find a way that was effective enough to get through Tommy Hearns' uh, defense. This one is just about history. Inside of 10, Benitez found Hearns with the right hand, did not hurt him. champions and a lot of respect being shown for one another in there too I oh think right i knew now. there was mutual respect between both fighters long before the the fight even started um tommy Hearns, i mean he deserved he was he had a, such an impressive showing against a great fighter a great champion like wilford Brunetti. yeah that's the thing that really strikes me is it, it was an impressive showing to be sure but the fact that he did it against the fighter of benitez's caliber is another story altogether i mean that's what you have to look at the fact that who he did it against benitez a great fighter but a lot of people don't know how great this man really is right now to the ring announcer let's get the official decision from jimmy lennon jimmy Ladies and gentlemen, we have a majority decision. Lou Filippo of California sees it 142 to 142, calling it even. He is overruled by Judge Dick Young, 146 to 136. Tony Castellano, 144 to 139. In favor of the winner by majority vote, the new super champion, Tommy Hitman.